Hello to Mac here and today I'm going to talk about the Lowriders Custom Classics DLC and my thoughts on this DLC. Now in this video I'm going to be sort of making a review for this DLC that came out last week called the Lowriders Custom Classics or some people will call it the Lowriders Part 2 because it's very similar to Lowriders Part 1. And uh, if you want to go check out my Lowriders Part 1 then there will be a link in the description because I probably will reference it in this video. If you want to know like exactly what Benny's is and all the other stuff, um, sort of, because uh, this is very similar to that first DLC. So first off, this DLC, um, we'll get into the cars first. Um, the cars are not new. Uh, we have the Slam Van Custom. We have the Faction Donks, which came in the first DLC. You just have the Donks now, which I, I find super frustrating because I bought the deal. I bought that car in the first DLC, and I can't put Donks on it anyways. So I. Don't even have any experience with that vehicle or the Virgo, um, and just because I didn't buy them. You know, I, I have experience with the Faction, just not the Donks version, because for some reason Rockstar, you know, wants me to buy a completely new car just to put that on. But other than that, I feel like the Slam Band is one of the coolest lowriders in the entire game. It's not exactly a lowrider, um, you know, it doesn't really feel like one. But it's just a very, very nice car in my opinion. I really do like the uh, Lowrider version. You know, I, I feel like the customization on it was pretty good. Maybe not the best, but it was still pretty good. And I really did like um, customizing the Slam Band, but that's the only car I have uh, customized so far. Now, there are three new cars that will be um, added eventually. We don't know an actual date. And uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, there are three cars, the uh, Minivan, the Sabre GT, and the Tornado. And those will eventually come out, most likely. It's just that, um, you know, I, I still want to make this video before because we don't know whenever those vehicles will come out. And I doubt that they'll sway my opinion on the DLC too much. Just keep that in mind that there will, um, once everything's said and done, there will most likely be six vehicles in the game and not just the three. So, vehicles were okay, but more of the same. There wasn't anything that really stood out to me aside from the slam van, like... The faction donks, like, sure, it's cool, but I'm not going to spend all the money just to buy a new faction just to get donks on it because I have to, you know, spend, like, all this money on that. I'm not going to do it and, you know, recustomize. If I could have just put, you know, my faction I bought in the Lowriders Part 1 and put donks on that, I would have then go, okay, you know, that's that's cool. I you know, probably would have paid for it, but uh, for the most part, I'm not exactly going to do anything with the faction custom um donks and same with the virgo I, I just haven't really felt a need to buy the virgo i feel like it'd be a waste of money anyways but overall with the slam van uh it's pretty cool and i really did enjoy that car but it's more of the same so it's not really anything new um and you know i'd say like you know, there isn't really much new in this dlc for the vehicles Next, moving on to the weapons. Now, the weapons, at first glance, they were kind of interesting, actually. It was the first time we've seen an assault rifle be added in almost two years now. And a pretty interesting shotgun as well. You know, a double barrel shotgun sounded actually pretty interesting. And, you know, the same with a compact rifle. Now, both of these weapons are smaller weapons. Um, you can use them on bikes, which is a very interesting mechanic. Although, I don't exactly really like either of them. Like... The compact rifle, in some very select situations, or if you're on a bike, sure it can be used, but the advanced rifle does everything that the compact rifle does better. And even then, I'd still rather use the special carbine, the carbine rifle, or the bullpup rifle, because both of those um, have just a little bit less damage, like just a tiny bit that less damage compared to to the compact rifle and have better stats in other places so I, I just I don't see really the point to the compact rifle unless you are on a bike and other than that uh, you have the double barrel shotgun which is interesting um, although I feel it's not as versatile as say the sawn off shotgun or the pump shotgun or anything like that or even the assault shotgun would probably be better in most situations the double barrel shotgun just kind of like it, it's it's too much of a risk for me to ever really see myself using you know, because it's not that consistent of a weapon, you know, because you have to hit both of your shots and it fires two and then the reload's kind of bad. So personally, both of these weapons, I don't see myself using much. I personally see myself using the double barrel shotgun a little bit more than compact rifle. But other than that, I don't know if I'd ever really use the double barrel shotgun either. 
So with these weapons, they're cool, they look cool, they have cool animations, they have cool sounds and all that. It's just that the stats themselves aren't really that impressive and they don't really bring anything new to the table. Aside from maybe the double over shotgun. And other than that, I mean you have you can use them on bikes, but I, I don't really I don't really, you know, go into combat situations on bikes. Maybe we'll see more people do that now, but other than that, I, I just, I don't see the point to some of the, or the compact rifle, and, and you know, kind of, I, I don't really see myself using the double barrel shotgun. And then also, uh, moving on to the clothing. Now, the clothing was actually kind of good in this DLC, I will say. Um, you know, it wasn't much clothing, but for, the, for what they did add, it was pretty good. It was more of the same from part one, it's not the best, but, you know, it's not that bad. And then moving on to Sumo, and I already made a review of Sumo, but the, uh, you know, quick version of that would be, basically, it's it's pretty good. It's not, like, something I'd see myself playing all the time. It's not something that, you know, is completely innovative or, you know, something that we've never seen in GTA. But it's still a decent game mode. It's not bad. And I'd say, for the most part, it's a little bit above average uh, for uh, the adversary mode. And that's kind of it for this DLC. There wasn't much else than that. I mean, there were a few additions, like the ammunition got updated. That's kind of a small change. You have Ghost of the Player, which I'm not a huge fan of. And then other than that, there's not really that big of any real change, actually. Um, it's just more of the same for Part 1, and that's kind of how I'd say this DLC is. Is it? I wouldn't say it's a bad DLC, but for the most part, it's just kind of average for the most part. I don't really see anything in this DLC that Rockstar added new, uh, aside from, I guess, the double barrel shotgun. That's really the only thing that I can really see, like, oh, you know, that's a cool thing that they added. Other than that, it's kind of just more of the same, and, you know, it's not a bad DLC, but uh, for the most part, it's just kind of, it's kind of there. You know, it's not anything new, um, is what I'd say. Because Lowriders was a pretty innovative DLC, in my opinion. You know, it added a completely new, um, you know, mod shop that we've never seen before. And then they just kind of reuse it, and there wasn't much new customization, at least from what I've seen. And for the most part, it's not really that uh, new in the customization department. Whereas, you know, Lowriders Part 1 was completely like that, you know. Even Lowriders Part 1 added where you could, you know, um, you know, open up the car doors and you could, you know, turn on the engine while you're outside and stuff. You there, there wasn't really any change like that in this DLC. You know, there wasn't really anything, you know, improving the Lowriders. It's just more Lowriders, I guess. And I am kind of uh, getting a little bit bored of Lowriders. I mean, we've seen uh, ever since uh, Lowriders came out in October... All the DLCs except for Executives and Our Criminals have been dealing with Lowriders. You have the Surprise January update as well, which, while technically aren't Lowriders, they are still Benny's vehicles. And I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of the Lowriders anymore. Like, they were cool at first, but I don't know. I like, I like the customization, but I'm, I, they're very expensive to customize forward. I want Rockstar to do something new, something innovative, and not just, you know, do this DLC uh, over and over again now maybe they'll do it in the future you know I, i'd be fine with that but i just want a few dlcs um in between uh whenever they bring it back because i feel like uh that would be very very nice anyways let me your thoughts on this in the comments did you like this dlc did you not you know where would you rate it in you know all, your, all the other dlcs well let me know that in the comments anyways hope you enjoyed feedback is all special i'll see you guys in the next video